where I get lost. It's okay. Because I can do an essay. You can that's do fine. It. Oh, putting okay. an essay into a paragraph and like what you're telling me, because like that that's the whole, that's where I'm lost. Okay. At the end of this time, at the end of this day, if I have not clarified, if, you're, if it doesn't click, let's yeah. talk. Because I'm really hoping, but I would say a paragraph is part of an essay. I'm doing one one leg of the whole essay, but I always start with paragraphs because if you can write one paragraph well, then you can write ten paragraphs well. And if you want your essay to be five paragraphs long, then I can do five paragraphs because I know how to do a paragraph. It'll make more sense when we get to the essay part with the key categories and yeah. after you've done yes. Other question? Okay. Okay. So yellows, are they specific with details or are they general? General. Okay, where does your specific and details come from? Red. Red. The reds. That's when, and I say just one sentence to begin with, but if they write two or three, I'm okay with that. But they have to write at least one into that box, basically saying, when I do the dinosaur ride, it first begins with blah, 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 and then in the middle it does this, and at the end you swish out, and it's so much fun. And you can add those bits, that might be too much, but you can, that's when you explain, give all the details about why um, the... Dinosaur rides a great ride. Quick yes. question about paragraphs. So when you're starting out and they're doing this, let's say they have tons of stuff to say about the dinosaur ride, and they like go on and on. Then they get to the toilet bowl and they've got like one thing to say. Right. Is that okay? Right. Because um, it sounds when you're reading it, it doesn't sound great. Okay. But at the beginning, is it okay to let them do that, or do you encourage them to say more about the toilet bowl ride, or right. take off some of the dinosaur ride? Yeah, I mean, I, I, do, I would say I would address it, and I would say um, I would say try to add more about the toilet bowl. I would look at their dinosaur a little bit there, their red, and go, is there anything that we could take out? They repent, you know, repent, they've been a little repetitive here, let's take that sentence out. So maybe shore up that, and then say, hey, can you find one more sentence to say down here? If it's, if it's way weird, like this part of the paragraph's their first <laughs> point, and then this part is their second point, I usually notice that, but if it's here, you know, here, and then here, I, I, I really just... It depends like, on how much. It, yeah, it yeah, just depends on the blatantly, and you're like, Ugh, So address it if it. it's major difference yeah, in yeah. the reds. But at the now. beginning, I would say I wouldn't worry too much about it, except I always say add a little more. I feel like kids usually don't write enough. They just want to say, Dennis the Red is great. It was really fun. I went fast. Right. Uh, yeah, and you're like, oh gosh. So I'm like, create a picture. Make me want to go because I hate water roll. Make me want to go, okay? And they'll be, you know, so I, like, I use, they usually tend to not want to say enough. And so then I'm like, constantly, yeah, I'm trying to say, okay. So, so y'all, yes. um, when, when I'm teaching my kids this or in class, um, some of my kids are creative and like to write a lot and have a lot of words. Mm -hmm. Some want to just get to the point, okay. move on. Okay. So even in class, what I will tell them is, your reds are your opportunity to go hog wild. Yes. And it's easier to pare down almost than to and to not stifle that creativity in them and to let them use all their words. And I just say that's your time to just speak as long as you're on topic. Yes. I would agree with that. That's fine. That's good. Yep. That's good advice. Is that what you're asking? Yep. That's okay. Good. Yep. That's okay. Exactly yep. It. That's good. Yep, I say the reds is when you can go hog wild. And there's a lot of kids out there that want to write one sentence with red and it's general and vague. So you just keep working on it. So adjectives and lots of description, let them go free with that. Yeah, yeah. especially for those narrative kind yeah. of stories so like bring, bring it to life to me, you know, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, when you start writing about academic stuff, yeah. that's when you are explaining yourself, okay, so this is what communism is. This is one leg of what they believe. And let me tell you what this means. And you have to kind of explain it, and you say, now why is this bad? So your reds are more like analyzing, explaining, and, and defining, and then giving your take on it. So it depends on the writing, but the main thing is, whether you're writing persuasively, informationally, or creating a story, not, not creating a story, this type of writing is not good for some creative poetry, or creative writing, this, no. If you want to write a story, and have my story, this is for your expository, which is information writing, um, and your persuasive writing, research paper writing, analyzing the novel writing. And the reason why I do this so hard is because 80% of all their education will be this kind of writing. And quite honestly, I withdrew from um, drama writing in college. And I thought it was the end of the world. I had a W in my transcript. I thought I'm never going to get a job. No one has ever asked me what W meant because I could not write plays. I hate writing plays. I just am not good at it. And so 
has anybody, does anybody have, I mean, I, I'm not a playwright, how many of us become a playwright? So, yes, great to do those poetry and creative writings and add those in, but it doesn't help you in, in life, and some of you might disagree with that. There's, I would say, out of, I've had about 1,600 kids that I've worked with in my career, one has maybe been turned into a, a professional writer, one. Most of those kids, teachers, engineers, counselors, and they need this writing. That's why I harp on it, and we do this, and then, then I had some fun, let's do a poem, and that's fine. But it's not, their education, you know, is not on that, it's on can you, in your civics class, in college, can you do it, you know what I mean? So, okay, so, I basically say, I tell kids, anything that's going to stand, stand up, has to have three legs to it, right? A stool. You cannot, you cannot sit down on a stool and be stable with one argument, with one yellow. Two, hard. Three, good. So I'm constantly saying, thinking threes, thinking threes, thinking threes. Do I have them do four and five sometimes? Yes. When they've read A Day No Pigs Have Died, and, and you're like, man, an essay's too much, then I might say, we're going to write just a paragraph. And you're going to write, you're going to have, I would say you're only going to have three reds, because you're going to do beginning, middle, and end. Or three yellows, sorry, three yellows, beginning, middle, and end. But I'm going to say, you know what, though? I want you to do two at the beginning. So you're going to have two yellows for the beginning part. You're going to have two, so you, all of a sudden, now you have six yellows in a pair of, you can extend it out. But I say you have to have at least three to begin with. Like stick to you got to have three because three gives you a solid argument. One or two doesn't. Okay. Then... Close the door. That's, oh, we're supposed to be coloring. Can you color these as, as we go? So green, yellow, red, yellow, red, yellow, red. And then I give brown to the door because when we're done driving, we go home and we close the door, we want to wrap it up. So it's just a way of remembering it. Um, so that's why I give the colors. Okay, so this is basically your... Um, So when they go to write an, a paragraph, this is what their paragraph will look like. And quite honestly, it'll be three quarters of a page long. If they do this right, I mean, if they have 14 font, it's going to be at least half a page, maybe three quarters of a page long. And that's what you want. But it's going to look like this, where they start with their green, then they give a yellow, then they give a red, then they give a yellow, then they give a red. Sometimes reds are longer than others at times. Sometimes their yellows are shorter than others. And then wrap it up with a concluding statement. And again, I'm, at first, the concluding statements are, are boring as heck. Fine, just my first papers, they're boring and skeletal. But I at least see, did they get, did they get it? And you need to look at it. You need to go, did they get it? Do they, do they have their yellows? Okay, and now you also need to remember that everything is interconnected. If you have a good green statement, this yellow supports that green statement. This red goes into detail about this yellow that supports the green. This yellow supports the green. It doesn't support this yellow, supports the green. So all of these go back to the green, and the red supports the yellow that supports the green. So it's all interconnected, okay? And then they, at the end, wrap it up, and this is your, and I tend to have them write about two of these, where it's just kind of the bare minimum. Then I start adding the exciting parts. Okay, the advanced transitions, things like that. So now, okay, so everybody got this colored? Okay, I tend to say, always give me a, I always say, give me a creative title, always. I like that creativity, get the thinking that way. Give me a creative title, and I, I say, great strategy is somehow pull the title, allude to the title in your concluding statements. That just helps it be like bookends, helps them be thinking creatively, helps them to, Connect, and so that's the strategy I usually start with. Give me a creative title and somehow connect it back to your um, conclusion. Uh, for example, I'm thinking of a paragraph that someone wrote on uh, how to serve a volleyball. It's a how to paragraph. Don't really necessarily like those very well because they're pretty boring, but um, I did it one year. And how to paragraph, and they labeled it David versus Goliath. Okay, and you're like, why? Well, they talked about um, how to surf and how you could get 5'2 girls to beat 6'2 girls on a good surf. 
Dave, and they, and I start, first I'm reading it, what does that have to do with it? And I start reading, and I'm like, that's pretty creative. And then at the end, they basically say, that's, if you have a good serve in volleyball, that's how, you know, your little 5-2 girls can beat your 6-2 girls every day, and little Davids can conquer the, the giants, or whatever, and it's David and Glenn. Okay, I get it. So that, that's where the creativity comes. Um, so anyway, so that's, any questions on paragraph writing? Yes. When you first start, because you said that you can explain and go into the reds mm -hmm. for a while, mm -hmm. but when you first start, do you just want one paragraph for each, or one sentence for each I do. So I just, just give me one sentence. And that's right. Eight, so it ends eight, up eight at okay. first. Yes, I usually start with that. Mm -hmm. okay. um, for like the first two. So first week, topic sentences. Second week, review topic sentences. Talk about the eight sentence paragraph. Write one together. Then their homework is, okay, write me another one. Okay, so then they have to come up with the topic sentence and they have to fill this in. And then I don't like to read handwriting, so then I'll say transfer it to the computer. I always do that. Especially I would tend to have them do that because then if they do a pretty good skill, like they do a pretty good job here, you can take this and go, let's add to it. And take all the little tools you're going to start adding to it and say, let's just do it to this paragraph, not making them create a new one. So then I say, to do it. So they, say, they do one, they transfer it to the computer, and then sometimes I'll just be like, you know what, they chose a terrible topic. It's boring as heck. We're going to do a different topic. And then I make them do it again. Okay, so I have them practice it again. So the third week, they do it again. And then like fourth week, I'm saying, okay, this is how you make it better. This is how you make it more advanced. This is how you, and I teach maybe one or two things. I teach, for one of the first things I teach, and I have it in your packet, is advanced transitions. Oh my God. Second thing I teach is let's make our reds more exciting. And I say, yeah. I want you to create a, tell me a story. Um, would it be helpful? I have a, an activity where I take a paragraph that's pretty general, and I say, these are six things that you can do to make it better. And then I show them an example of applying all those six things to it. The same, the same idea of the paragraph, but I've added to it so they can see simple, what we're starting with, more advanced. Would you like to see that? Yeah. Okay. Um, um, uh, ways to improve a paragraph. Um, okay, I'll, I'll put that on there too. I'll try to put these in order so that you can because all this goes in order. Um, okay. Okay, so next. Can I ask you? Yes. Um, so with my daughter last year, she was a senior. Um, she likes. She's very wordy, and so we were working hard on condensing it down because she would have way too much to say to make a point. Okay. But um, I also didn't want to stifle the creativity mm -hmm. that she would put into her. She was putting it more into her yellows, um, and so because she felt she had to set it up. And explain it. And so yellow size is tricky for me to know it wasn't general. Right? And so she felt she had to set it up to explain it to get to her point. And then she didn't have as much to say. I would keep trying to reverse it. Yeah. I think it's okay for yellows to set you up. And I'm going to teach how you add a little bit to your yellows. Mm -hmm. um, but and, but, the, the, but just, just FYI, okay, this one gets tricky. When a kid starts getting it. And they start, they've, you've harked this system over and over and over, but they get it. They'll start mixing reds and yellows. Yeah, They'll start, and, and that really okay. is advanced writing. Okay. Well, and especially, but you, what you have to do is you have to go, okay, is she talking in circles? Has she, has she said something here, said something else, said what she said up here again? That's when you have to go, you as a, as a, as a, as your, their teacher, look at that yellow and red that's, that's there, and you take that chunk, and you go, okay. Is it repeating at all? Is she cir you know, circling a little bit? Is there any other way that she could organize this better? But if there's not, if it's like, oh, it's flowing and it's making a sense and she hasn't repeated herself at all, then a good okay. writer will start okay. mixing it and that's okay. But it's not okay at the beginning because their mixing is not good writing. <laughs> it's not. They're, they're just, they don't even know what they're saying. And then you're like, no, 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 let's break it up. I want general, setting it up a little bit, then I want all the explaining, second of all, and then, if you've harped on that, then they'll start doing it, mixing it, and that's okay. And that's probably what's happening. That's probably what's happening. Yeah, especially if like, she's well, a senior. That could be yellow, it could be red. Yeah, yeah, and then it gets <laughs> tricky, yeah. And that, I, all of my writers started doing that um, towards the end. Okay. 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 So, um, okay, so now on the back side, I think, is this, if you want to flip that first page. I'm um, no flag. Like, turn it 
turn the page and look at the back. Is it the flood of 93? Yes. Okay, these are real life um, paragraphs written by middle school and uh, this one might be early high school. Um, they're more like science history um, paragraphs, which I like because you can do this for any, any subject. Okay, what I want you to do is for this first one, I want you to read it silently and take your colors. And I want you to see if you can find the colors. Okay? And I'm, I'm not trying to trick you. For the most part, I feel like it's very cut and dry. But I want you to see how easy it is to see the colors when there's a transition at the beginning. You're like, oh, that's yellow. Woohoo! You know? And then, but it is a little tricky because sometimes they're reds. Can be three or four, and you're like, are they going to start on their yellow? But I just constantly ask myself, are they still explaining that yellow? And if it, like that sense, is that is that still explaining the yellow, or is that introducing a new idea? But for the most part, if they have a transition, then it's easy to tell. So you should have a green, and then yellow, red, yellow, red, yellow, red. But you're going to have more reds than yellows, and then they're wrapped up. So see if you can see it. I want you to color it and see it. And if you have, if there's any questions, pull up the question mark. Go. This one's confusing. Me. Are you going under the Okay, um, just kind of want to touch uh, on some of this. Um, Flood of 93, not, not a creative title, but it covers, does, does what it should, I guess. Um, I might say, hey, see if you could, I don't know, spat, you know, make that a little bit better. Um, first sentence, although, okay, we have an old um, www.asiaword. Although I did not know much about the Flood of 93, I know a few things after reading many articles on this topic. Okay, so the Flood of 93 is in the first part of it, but you still know what they're talking about in the second. So basically, what's being proven in that paragraph, and I, this is what I say. After I read that, I, I stop and I go, what's being proven in this? What? What I learned. What I learned from? Reading about the Flood. The Flood. Okay, so basically, these are the things I learned about the Flood. 
Okay, so if I can say like that, I bet they have three points on that. I just stop and I ask myself, what are they proving? Is it clear? Got it. And, and that's how I check it. Okay, you'll get better as you stop and do that. Don't just randomly read. So I think it's a good green. That's what I'm saying. I think it's a decent green. First, okay, what does that signal to me? Yellow. Okay, we're on the yellow. Okay, I learned that many kids were affected by the flood. So what's this part going to be about? The kids. So I'm t telling myself that. Okay, this one's about kids. Okay, and how they're affected. So now I look at my next red. Many kids were upset because they saw their parents under a lot of stress. So does that red support that yellow? Yes. Okay. They also were forced to leave their homes, friends, and everything else they own, including their valuables. Again, is that supporting the yellow about kids? Yes. So I know it's a red. So it's, see how I'm like, they're on the right track. Okay. Next, those who seemed most affected were between the ages of 6 and 13. Still talking about kids? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes. So there's three reds after that. Okay, and everything pertains to what she said, or he said, was going to be, which is the kids were affected. So everything's organized, they're clear, um, I'm learning something as I'm going along, they've learned something, but it's logical and organized, and that's what I want. Okay, um, secondly, I know, okay, this is the next point. I saw that thousands of acres of crops were destroyed, so what's this, what the red's going to be about? Crop. So I, I say that in my head as I'm looking at this because it's your job to make sure they're doing it right. I, I really feel like kids, I taught freshman English for eight years at Faith Christian. And I would have kids come back to me in college and say, you're the one that taught me how to write. So they had gone through <coughs> sophomore English, junior English, senior English, and they're coming back to me saying, thank you. I knew how to write in college. And I'm like, really? Like, I was like, and it's because... I'll just tell you why. I made them do it. And I read what they wrote, and I commented on it, and I would say stuff like, your reds need more depth. And they knew what that meant. Because we've been talking, whereas, uh, can I even tell you how many teachers read it? Idiot. And the kid's like, I don't know what I did right. Didn't I? And I, so as you, you only have your kids. Give them feedback that's appropriate to what you've taught them. And if you get this, then give that feedback. Like, you, and I, I, your yellows are wonderfully organized. Good job. And I would say positive things. Your reds seem to be a little bit um, shallow. Can you let's next time choose a topic that would force you to write better reds, or or make your reds. I need to, um, you know, teach what imagery is, and then say, okay, I need to be able to see a picture in my mind for at least one red next time. So then you're giving feedback, so then the next paper they write, you're looking for it. So since you only have one or two, three, so we have four or five kids, um, give feedback and hold them to it, okay? Okay, and this is how I do it. I, I ask myself, does this red go into detail about that yellow, okay? Okay, so um, secondly, I saw that thousands of crops. So many crops were lost because the flood covered the fields where the crops were growing. Is that red pertaining to the yellow? Okay. Some people estimate that $4 million worth of crops were lost. Is that pertaining to the yellow? Yep. Okay. Farmers hope to get some compensation from the government. Pertaining to the yellow? Yes. Yes, so everything's lining up the way it should. Okay? I guarantee you, if you don't teach the system, 80% of your kids would go crops, kids, crops, kids, kids. Uh, Mississippi River was important. And, and, and they are, and they circle around and start talking about kids when they set, they've already wrapped up that point. So it really forces them to stay to the topic and, and stay organized. Mm -hmm. All right, thirdly, I learned about the Mississippi River. Okay, so I'd stop and go, okay, everything after the sentence needs to be something about the Mississippi River. During the flood, the river was over three times full, fuller, fuller than usual. Okay, is that talking about Mississippi River? Yes. Okay, in places the river covered land over three miles away from the bank. And again, there's, their reds are pretty interesting. Like, wow, three miles over the bank? Can you imagine a river being three miles over its bank. So, I mean, th this kid has good detail, but it's organized, okay? Um, lastly, um, those in charge of cleanup say the flood. Okay, so then how many reds or yellows did, they, did this kid have? Four. Totally okay. Does he have a red after it? No, that's okay. Sometimes a yellow can stand on its own, and I let that happen. But the basic premise is yellow, red, yellow, red, yellow, red, and with yellow, okay, I'm okay with that. Okay. Um, lastly, those in charge of cleanup say the flood did about $10 million worth of damage. The flood has certainly had an effect on people and the environment. Again, so the next time, so what would I say, what would you say positively about this paragraph? If, you were, if this was your kid, what would you say that was good? Yeah. You've done what I've taught you. Yes, great, well, well organized. Good. Anything else? 
they had even more than one red. Right, they had, the reds were in depth. And interesting, okay? Yeah, so yeah. yeah, so I would say that. Like so they're like, I get it, okay, good. What would you say your next page, your next time you do a paragraph, what are you gonna say to this kid? What can he improve on? More creative title. More creative title. Easy. Easy mm -hmm. thing to do. Yep, make a more creative title. What else? Get a, get some reds for your last yellow. You could say add that if you if you think he needs it. If in, so in my opinion, I might say, you know what, I, it's fine, but he could have added a red to that. Perfect, yep. I feel like the conclusion sentence could have been a little I agree. It's, mm, I agree. So it's like, come on, let's let's vamp that up. And again, I have stuff on, I have a whole sheet that says conclude to motivate. But that's tricky because that is subjective. How do you teach a kid to say something more powerfully? But it's that thing of, um, there's uh, this campaign season, you could start pointing stuff out. Um, there's that um, African American guy that's running for Senate, and he, what does he say? He goes, we are not, we are not, um, Black people, red people, white people, we are a united people. I said something like that. And I, I was doing my plays, I'm like, that's pretty good. And I literally went to my conclude to motivate and I <laughs> typed that in because that was a, that was like, boom. You know, it was that, it's almost like being that, you know, presidential candidate that's trying to vote. That's what, but it's hard to teach that. How do you teach that? Except you just point it out like, oh, that was good. Or, um, yeah, so that's hard. But yes, then you're trying to work on that. And I have a little, tactics to help that, but um, that's the, when it gets subjective, and you're like, oh, how do I teach the more creative? I don't know. Um, but I do have stuff on that if, if you want it. Yes? I tend to be a little bit more nitpicky, I think, instead of like, coming up with all the things that are really great about it. Okay. Because what, what if you that was my kids, I would immediately harp on his reds and say, you know what, you could combine all of those into one sentence. Oh, okay. Mm. Let me see. Well, it, the, first pair, the, the first yellow might have two. Okay. But then the rest of them, they're all like, you can make all of those one sentence. Okay. And okay. And so, um, like, should I not do that? Should I just leave it the way it is and not, like, be... Let, let's, let's... But it depends on how much make that information that your child knows. Sentence. Because if this is what they know, then this is what they have to present. Right, but they all kind of go together, you know? Mm -hmm. So the kids, um, they, they saw their parents under a lot of stress and they lost everything. Well, yeah, they were under stress because they lost a lot of everything. Yeah. So... This is what I would say. Um, I, I'm working with a kid right now whose mom is, um, it's like, I, I'm having her do this, right? And she's doing exactly what I'm asking her to do. And the mom wants to come in and she's editing a ton. Say it this way, put this word in. And, and I'm like, but that's now not, oh, that's not hers now. It's you saying this needs to be worded better, whatever. So I tend to go, I like this for now. And this is, like I said, this is, 6th, 7th, and 8th grade, okay? I have some strategies of, instead of me just inserting words or saying, put a coordinating conjunction here, and da 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 and I'm doing it for them, they're like, oh, you know what coordinating do? It's like, it's like Charlie Brown, okay, mom, I'll add that in, and da 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 I say, keep it here, and then all my little strategies of, we need to start our sentences, we need to combine our sentences together better. Um, you know, we're gonna we're gonna make this now. See how you have three simple sentences together. We are gonna combine two of them and make a compound. Then we're gonna add an ing phrase at the end, and now it's gonna be it's gonna still be a compound sentence, but it's gonna be one sentence all together. So then, but so it's it's teaching a trick. They then try to apply instead of me going in and editing. So, um, but I so I feel like. I, there's other stuff in this packet that's going to help them to be like, and you could say, try to combine these sentences using, um, this, you know, strategies on this worksheet or whatever, and then they could do it themselves instead of you. But I feel like our tendency is to go in and do it for them, and they don't even know what they've done because you've done it for them. But um, so, yeah, can for I elementary add? or for middle school, I feel like this is good. This yeah. is what I want. Can I add to that? I think it's kind of like. The way I see it, it's kind of like a building block. Like it, it is very simplistic. So yes, we all get to that point where we're like combining our sentences, but it, we didn't do that at the beginning. We are right. it's kind of maturity thing. I, I agree. So it's like okay, let's start with the simple sentences, and then we start learning how to kind of combine it and get that bigger thought. But it is a transitional right process. And yeah, I would totally agree with that exactly. And the other thing is, is once you start higher level, um, like you know, regurgitating information doesn't require a ton, I mean, it's good for that middle school, but it's, once they start doing um, harder level topics, then all of a sudden, 
um, their their writing might be, well they might be, they might keep it more simple because they need to make it clear but sometimes they'll they'll start um, writing more complex because their ideas are more complex because it's a harder topic so that could also happen too but I, I feel like it is a building block thing I say this is good next time you'll see the tricks in the rest of this packet and you can be like okay I see how they could you could say these are this is four sentences long I want you to make it two use these strategies and then they have to go and it's hard like oh don't make me do that. You know, it, that then it's hard, but it's not you going in and going, take this word out and put, put this word in and put this ending here because then it'll make it a complex sentence and all of a sudden you've done it and they don't have a clue what you've just done. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's, I, that's what most parents do, including myself. Yeah. So was this written from a, not a web probably, because that's a more elementary I don't know. idea. So, okay. Great. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't remember. Because this could have been outlined. <laughs> it could have been outlined, right? Could have right. been a web too, though. Right. Except they probably didn't have all those reds. They probably just said, you know, children were affected, and then that they might not have done their reds, and then knowing I'm going to put some sentences after that for my reds. But um, I would say a web or a bullet. And when I bullet, like I like bullets better than outlines because I feel like they get bogged down with you know, Roman numeral, and then capital A, and I'm like, oh, I don't want to deal with that, because, ugh. So I'll tend to do something like this. I'll say, okay, start doing bullets for me. And I'll just say, um, you know what, um, what was the best part about, um, oh gosh, um, your summer? And then you could say, um, uh, water world. Okay, and then you'd say, um, camping with dad. Okay, and then, um, you can say, um, um, let's see, um, oh, getting the ears pierced. Again, I'm talking about my 11-year-old daughter, ears pierced. This is literally what her summer was, was about. And then I'm saying, okay, now I want you to give me all the details you can think about with Water World. Okay, I went with my best friend, and we just had such a good time because we got to go on rides by ourselves with that mom. Whatever, you know, um, best friend and some independence. Oops, I'm spoiling friends wrong. That's embarrassing. Um, okay, and then camping. I got to um, hike with my dad. Uh, whatever, and so then now all of a sudden I'm like, what what color are these? Yellows. Yellows. What color are these? Reds. 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 Um, what's your overall green? Summer. 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 Or yeah, the best summer ever. Best summer ever. ever. Or what is what my summer was like? It was great. Okay, so do you see? If you teach this organization, we can whip out papers like just like this. It's not overwhelming at all. You just keep 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 doing this kind of thing. So sometimes I do bullets. Sometimes I do whips. Okay. Okay, so, okay, um, okay, this is the next paragraph, it's a different author, okay, um, and let's see what's better, so I'm just going to kind of go through it quickly, um, furious force, anybody know what that is, what um, little trick they've used in writing, in writing, what's furious force, what's that called, alliteration. alliteration, so they've used some alliteration, I teach that, that's an easy way to make things Create so alliteration. Okay, fierce force. Interesting. I don't know what this is about, but it sounds good. Okay, so creative title. They've done well. Different writers though, but this is like up in the ante a little bit. Because of various reasons, tsunamis are one of the most deadly um, natural disasters. What's this paragraph? And so this is how I grade it. What's this paragraph going to be about? Tsunamis. Tsunamis and how they are deadly, not fun, right? Okay, so I know what the main the main idea is. The first reason tsunamis are deadly is the seemingly small and spread out waves. Okay. What color is that? Yellow. 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 Okay. Do you notice it's not a simple transition like first comma, but the first reason. That's a little bit more advanced. Okay. So now every sentence after that needs to be talking about the, the spread out the waves and this, that kind of thing. The wavelength. Is that red good? Is it talking about what was said in the yellow? Which is the space from the top of one wave to the top of the next is really wide. Okay. What trick is that? Um, you've learned it from IEW. Who wish clause. clause right there. Okay, so now what you were worried about was the writing is maybe simplistic. If I've taught a who wish clause and I've taught alliteration and I've taught advanced transitions, in the first three lines we've read, it's a better paragraph. But it's not because I've gone in and edited, I've taught these three strategies, now apply them. And so now they're trying to apply them. Okay? Again, this is a different author though, so it's not like, ooh, look, he's gone from here to here. But a, a, lot, a lot of times that will happen. You'll be like, this is where they were at the beginning, and oh my gosh, this is where they are now. It's awesome. Okay? So the wavelength, which is the space, blah, 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 is really wide. Therefore, if one 
was flying a helicopter, the distance can be several hundred miles between waves. Still talking about wavelength? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's another red. Okay. Okay. Let me see what the next one is. It doesn't say wavelength in the, in the yellow. Um, Seemingly small and spread that's out waves. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so again, it's they've. Uh, sometimes you just have to see uh, are they making sense? And if they do start with strain, with saying, but I don't like it repetitive. So I'm after they've done their first one, a lot of times they're so repetitive, and you're like, okay, that's what I got to address. Never say the same word, you know, twice in three sentences close together. You have to choose a synonym, and that's another trick that you teach because they will, they'll write it, and you'll probably hate it. You're like, well, it's too simple, it's repetitive, whatever. But they've got the system down. Now address. Okay, let's stop with the repetition. You cannot use the same words in um, three sentences close together. Okay, you have to use advanced transitions. And then you start adding that in, and then all of a sudden they're saying that's better than the first. But they still get the organization. So that's kind of how it works. It's, it's this building block thing. Okay, so now I'm going to see if, what, if I think the next one's a red or, or a yellow. Therefore, if one was, oh, no, that one's good. Along. Along, Along with the wavelength. The actual wave is not very high when at sea, only three feet, but gets significantly higher than the closer, oh, higher, the closer to shore.